All right, welcome in to another day of our Daily Devos. Your Daily Devo coming at you. Coming at you out of the book of Hosea. We are in chapter four. Like We're not quite halfway there, but we're making some good progress. You're, you're keeping up the good work. You're showing up every day. You're doing the work. That's what we got to do with the word of God. We just got to keep showing up every day. We got to keep doing the work. We got to put in our time to allow the Lord to have more opportunity to take the word of God off the pages and just cram it into our hearts and make it real to us that it changes who we are. And we just keep on going and keep on growing. Can I get an amen to that? Drop an amen in the comments if you agree with that. Um, and like and subscribe and share and do all the good things that more people be able to see it. And if you happen to be going through a Bucky's, feel free to get me a hat and send it my way. <laughs> I I like hats, all right, and I like Bucky's, and so I like Bucky's hats. Okay, I mean it just it is what it is. So got a little bit of sunshine today, so my face is a little on the sunburned side. So nobody be poking at my face, okay? Like easy, easy. So <clears throat> we're gonna jump into chapter four here. Here the word of the Lord, people of Israel, for the Lord has a case. Yeesh. That's not a good place to be, not a good place to be, and I don't know what I just did to my computer. That was fun. Okay, <laughs> we're back. Um, <laughs> hear the word of the Lord, people of Israel, for the Lord has a case against the inhabitants of the land. There's no truth, there's no faithful love, no knowledge of God in the land. Cursing, lying, murder, stealing, and adultery are rampant. One act of bloodshed follows another. So here we shift from chapters 1, 2, and 3, talking about Hosea, talking about who he is, talking about his wife, talking about his kids and their names and what they represent. Now we are moving beyond the storyline of Hosea's family and we are moving into kind of understanding what's going on in the kingdom of Israel, the northern tribes of Israel. And we are going to begin to understand um, why they're in trouble, why, why they're in trouble, why the Lord would come and he would say, tell the people there's no more compassion, tell the people they're no longer my people, um, tell the people I'm going to scatter them. Because cursing, lying, murder, stealing, adultery, rampant. One act of bloodshed following another. For this reason, the land mourns and everyone who lives in it languishes. And this is just true of sin in general, really, that when sin is rampant in a country, in a nation, <clears throat> amongst a people, unfortunately, it does not just affect the people that are committing the sin. Like it has effect on people around. I mean, one act of bloodshed following another, you know, a lot of times the person whose blood is shed was not the one committing a crime, not the one that did anything wrong. Well, a lot of times it's just a victim of the crime. So along with the wild animals and the birds of the sky, even the fish of the sea disappear. So uh, he seems to be indicating that there's even effect on nature when there's sin so rampant. This is not in my notes, but just, you know, kind of like, huh. You know, people are so concerned about climate change and about the environment and yet give no thought to cleaning up the moral picture. Like they're completely disconnected. And I think that's missing a big point. At least it seems that way. For this reason, the land mourns and everyone who lives in it languishes. And along with the wild animals, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea, they disappear. But let no one dis dispute. Let no one dispute. Let no one argue for my case is against you priests. Um, yeah. And so things are not looking good. For the priesthood, um, you will stumble by day. The prophet will also stumble with you by night. And I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That'd be kind of a famous quote out of the book of Hosea. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge 
But I think that it's really important to recognize why there was a lack of knowledge. It's because you have rejected knowledge. It's, it was their choice to say no, to turn their back. So God's saying, I will reject you from serving as my priest since you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your son. So since you've chosen to forget the law of your God, you know, like how, how would you feel if I forgot you, you know, and how, and then if it affected the next generation, the more they multiplied, the more they sinned against me. So the, the religion that they were kind of involved with, with the Canaanites and just all the idol worship that was going on around them was really focused on fertility and on prosperity. And it's like one thing that we as Americans need to be careful about in today's day. There's such a focus, even in the Christian church, on this concept of prosperity that we can get our hearts set on the wrong things. Because the the whole thing is not like prosperity is evil because there's plenty of people in the Bible that were serving God faithfully and that were doing quite well. There were also people that were serving God quite faithfully and were doing terrible. Like they were poor, they were destitute, they were, you know, in bad places, you know? And so, so weird, I guess it means it's not an indicator of your spiritual vitality, you know, whether you're prospering or not is not a sign of your spirituality. So the more they multiply, the more they sinned against me. So prosperity for them was working against them. I will change their honor into disgrace. So God is coming to bring some judgment upon their actions so that their hearts can be captured once again by the love of God, that they would begin to understand the brokenness of the way that they are going. They feed on the sin of my people. They have an appetite for their iniquity. They have an appetite for their iniquity. I think it's really important to talk about appetites and how appetites work. Appetites are generally based on the things that you are feeding yourself. If you want to change your appetite, you want to change your cravings, you have to change your diet. You have to change the things that you feed yourself. And it takes time. So they have an appetite for their iniquity. They've been feeding themselves on iniquity for so long now their heart longs for it the same judgment will happen to both people and priests i will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds so there's there's a there's a recompense you know there's a there's an accountability that's coming they will eat but not be satisfied they will be promiscuous but not multiply for they have abandoned their devotion to the lord so you want to talk about why why their prosperity was bad? This little section of the verse right here tells us why the prosperity was bad because they've abandoned their devotion to the Lord. That's when it's bad. When it causes you to pull your heart away from the Lord. So promiscuity, wine and new wine take away one's understanding. This is interesting really here promiscuity is one of the things that takes away people's understanding. I don't think that people take that. I mean, everybody understands wine and new wine and, you know, drunkenness and kind of losing your, your wits about you because you're, you're under the influence of alcohol. But how many people take into consideration just how messed up your thinking can get when you are lost in a pathway of promiscuity? So promise beauty, wine, and new wine take away one's understanding. My people consult their wooden idols and their divining rods inform them. For a spirit of promiscuity leads them astray. Woof. (laughs) Like, ugh. So there's apparently a spirit of promiscuity that's involved here too, not just not just natural inclinations of the heart, not just natural appetites that they've been building. But now we've actually got a spirit of promiscuity that is actively leading them astray. 
so that then they act prom, uh, promiscuously in disobedience to God, continuing to go that pathway. They sacrifice on the mountaintops and they burn offerings on the hills and under the oaks, poplars and terebinths because their shade is pleasant. So your daughters act promiscu- uh, promiscuously and your daughters-in-law commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they act promiscuously or your daughter-in-laws when they commit adultery for the men themselves go off with prostitutes and make sacrifices with cult cult prostitutes. People with discernment are doomed. Uh, Sorry, people without people without discernment are doomed. Hmm. Lord, help us to be a people of discernment. Help us to be equipped. Help us to stay on the right path help us to follow closely to you Israel if you ask if you act promiscuously don't let Judah become guilty do not go to Gilgal or make a pilgrimage to Beth Avon and do not swear an oath as the Lord lives listen to this description of Israel for Israel is as obstinate as a stubborn cow now my friend Mason he 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 has cows and so I'll bet you this phrase here really means a little something extra to him because he's probably had to deal with a stubborn cow, right? Like, um, I, I'm not a rancher, you know, so, uh, I can picture in my mind and I could probably Google and find a YouTube video about obstinate, stubborn cows. Nevertheless, the Lord tells Israel, you are as obstinate as a stubborn cow. Like you just, you're not getting it. You're not moving. You're not changing. So can the Lord now shepherd them like a lamb in an open meadow? Ephraim is attached to idols. Leave him alone. When their drinking is over, they turn to promiscuity. Israel's leaders fervently love disgrace. A wind with its wings will carry them off and they will be ashamed of their sacrifices. So really, it's just this overall picture of yuck, of just total yuck going on now. That could be really, really discouraging, except that God's already given us a little window, a little view of what's going on because he's already told us like, hey, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to say like, you're not my people and there's no more compassion and you're going to be scattered. But then in the same chapter, basically, he's like, well, but then I'm going to call people that have been not my people. I'm going to call them my people and the people that I've scattered, I'm going to gather and the people that, um, that I've said, there's no more compassion. There's going to be compassion. There's going to be restoration. So we serve a God of restoration. So even people, even people who find themselves in this kind of a scenario, there is still hope because the God is a God of restoration. And so he's just looking for people that will hear and they will respond. That's why, that's why it starts out at the very, very beginning verse one here of this chapter, hear the word of the Lord people of Israel for the Lord has a case against the inhabitants of the land. Hear the word of the Lord to you today and the case that maybe the Lord has against you and that he wants to bring his case against you to redeem you and restore you and to make you new. That's that's the awesome thing about God. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation To those who are in Christ Jesus, he is coming alongside us to heal us, to mend us, to restore us, to make us new. Unbelievable. God is so good. So therefore, you are encouraged. I just just prophesy that over you, that you're encouraged today because you've heard the word of the Lord today. And he is good. And so you're encouraged because you serve such a good and loving God who is full of of love, full of forgiveness, full of restoration. So good. Does he hate sin? Yes, he hates sin. And he comes to judge that sin because he knows that that sin is going to lead you to death. And he has come that you would have life and life to the full. And that means putting a stop to the evil that you have committed your life to at times, right? And so be encouraged. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow.